Amen. But we're going to go ahead and dive into the word. And the, the, the title of today's message is the Abraham kind of faith. Amen. You know, Abraham was the father of faith. We've known him as the father of faith. And so, you know, I just want to I just want to <clears throat> go into that and and just share some things about you, share some things with you that kind of just the Holy Spirit just kind of uh, wakened up or, 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 or as Pastor Ad would say, woke up, it woke up in me. Amen. He awoke them in me. Amen. And uh, um, but they were they were they were they were made alive in me and they just jumped out of the pages and came alive to me. So listen, we're just going to dive right in today. I want to I want to encourage you to hold fast to your profession of faith. Amen. Hold fast to that which you which you confess of, uh, in your faith. As Christians, we walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. Let me say that again. We walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. The Bible tells us that that we live by faith. Listen, that that that, that we live by faith faith amen so so you understand we walk by faith we live by faith listen so this morning i want to encourage you to listen to your faith what is your faith saying not what your fear is saying listen listen to your faith and shut your fear out amen because it's in a time like this we have the tendency of just wanting to wanting to you know let fear grip us and fear control us and fear, and fear may, listen and fear will make you help you make every wrong decision that you ever thought you could make amen so listen, I want you this morning to listen to your faith. What is your faith saying? What has your faith brought you through? What has your faith done for you in the past? I want you to hear what your faith has to say about the things that God has already brought you through. So that listen, so that no fear could have control over you this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Listen, the other day I had a, I, I was, I was, I was praying and I was asking the Lord. I said, you know, I had one of those real spiritual moments, you know. Lord, just give me something, you know, for such a time as this. Come on now, I'm, I know I'm not the only person that's prayed, you know, try to get real spiritual. You know, it, 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 we all do it, amen. And I prayed that prayer, you know, Lord, give me, give me a word for such a time as this, you know. And, 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 and you know, it, it, the, 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 the response that I got from the Lord, you know, was almost comical. I mean, it was one of those things where, where I probably would have laughed if, I, if, 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 if the thought hadn't come that maybe the reason God said what he said was because so many people are abandoning their beliefs, are abandoning their faith, are abandoning what they already know about him because of the fear around them. Let me say again, many people are, are abandoning what they know about him because of the fear around them. And that's not something that we should be doing. You understand? Listen, no, we walk by faith. No, I live by faith. I am alive because faith has been strong in somebody's life that prayed me through. I am alive because, and well, because somebody prayed and had faith. I, are you hearing what I'm saying? It's faith. Hallelujah. So listen, what is your faith saying? Amen. What is your faith? Saying? And I had this, you know, and, and the Lord said this to me. He said, I, you know, when, when I asked him, I said, Lord, give me something for, for such a time as this. I said, give me something, Lord, that I, so that I could, so that I could preach, you know, and, and, and the Lord said, my word. <laughs> It's pretty simple, isn't it? My word. Hallelujah. You know, and, 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 and as I looked at that, he said, he said, my word. And I'm like, okay. I said, you know, uh, he, he was, and, and, and uh, he said, he said, simply preach my word. He said, my word is good in the good times. He said, my word is good in the good times. My word. My word is good in the good time. He says, but my word works exceptionally well. I said, my word works exceptionally. He said to me, he said, my word works exceptionally well in the hard times. He said, when you're going through it, he said, my word works really good. He said, it works at all times, you understand. But he said, when people really understand that my word is at work, he says, it's when they can do nothing about their circumstance, when they can do nothing about what they're going through. He said, my word works. He said, my word shut the lion's mouth, hallelujah, for Daniel. He said, my word just, listen, defeated a giant, hallelujah. My word, listen, made cleanse the leopard, hallelujah. My word made the sick to, listen, heal the sick, made the, le the lame to talk and the then, then, mm, made the lame to walk and the dumb to talk my word my word hallelujah he said my word fed multitudes he said my word fed 5,000 with two fish and a few small and a few loaves 
He said, and I didn't just do it once. He said, I did it again. He said, because there was some that were going to, he said, there was some that were going to make it, excuse it out. He said, so I did it again. He said, my word will, will, will supply even when there's not enough. Come on now. Somebody say amen. I said, he said, my word will supply even when you think there's not enough. And in a time when people are, are running around and trying to figure out, you know, how we're going to do this. He said, my word works. He simply said, preach my word. He said, stick to my word. He said, preach my word. And, you know, the day I just, as he said that, you know, I said, okay. And so, you know, this is what, 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 the, what I came up with, and this is what, what stirred up in my heart. And this is what I believe that God approved of. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23. Let's go ahead and get started here. He says, let us hold, let us hold fast to the profession of our faith without wavering. For he is faithful that promised. Let us hold fast to our profession of faith without wavering. In other words, don't waver. Don't doubt it. Don't second guess it. If God's word said it, then it's, it's good. Hallelujah. It's his word. Hallelujah. And we don't have to waver. We don't need to. Why? Because God's word is good. God's word is good. He says, hold fast. He said, hold fast to that which you believe. Hold fast to that which your faith is saying. Amen. So well, listen, what is your faith saying? Whatever your faith is saying, listen, whatever your faith has said, whatever your faith brought you through in the past, hold fast that the same God that made it happen then is the same. You know, we used to sing a song when we were in Rhema, and that song was, He'll Do It Again. You know, and it's, it's not that He'll Do It Again, uh, uh, you know, from Elevation Church. You know, it was, He'll Do It Again, you know, you know, and... and, and and, and listen, that song got my wife and I and, and our whole family through Bible school when there was never, because it was that first year, we never had enough for anything, amen. I used to, I, you know, I, I, I was happy we had, you know, 15, 20 cents left over after paying all the bills. As long as we had enough, just enough, you know, and, and, and I realized something, you know, he did it again, and then he did it again, and then he did it again. He didn't listen every month that there was that we had tuition payments. He had to do it. Why? Because we were short uh, four hundred and four hundred and forty two dollars and forty two cents, something like that. I mean, you know, I used to have the exact amount, but it was in, I had it down to the cents. And, and, you know, and he he did it every single time. And I seen what he did then. And I and I realized that today, you know, with, with everything shutting, you know, can I just say this with everything shutting down? You know, I, 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 I've just said, Lord, my life is in your hands. And the other day I was talking with my daughter and I told her, I said, sweetheart, is your car payment paid? She goes, yes. I said, is your phone bills paid? She goes, yes. I said, is there anything that you're lacking? She said, no. I said, do you got, do you got a little extra money? She said, yes. I said, then you're blessed. Amen. I said, don't partake of, don't part, I said, you, you know, listen, but you don't understand, you know, uh, uh, they say that Wall Street is about to crash or Wall Street, you know, the stock market is going up. Listen, and, and, and let me just say this. If you are, if you are, if you are employed and you do work in the stock market or you work, in, you know, in, in the trade field and stuff, let me just put it to this. You just believe God that God is going to have something for you to trade that's going to put you over, not under. Amen. 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 Because listen, we're going to hold fast. To the profession of our faith. We're going to hold fast to what we believe. Listen. Stop listening to your fear. Stop listening to your fear. You say, how do you know if I, how do I know if I'm listening to my fear? If you're talking, listen, if you're talking all about what's going on around you, then listen, you are listening to your fear too, way too much. You can always tell when a person's in fear because if they're talking more about more about the coronavirus and more about the pandemic than they are about God's word. And listen, you know that they are in fear. I don't care how secure they look. I don't care how secure they seem. If they're if all they're listen, all, all I can talk about is Psalms 91. All I can talk about is that no plague shall come nigh my dwelling. All I can talk about is that my God is my source. And listen, he is provided. I got plenty of food in the house, you know, and, and, and you know, I, and I'm gonna be honest with you. I didn't go and, you know, stockpile and, and, you know, fill up freezer. You know, but you know, there's never been a shortage. Amen. Hey, Matt, there's never been a shortage. Not even of TP. 
Hey man, God has always provided that there be some there when I go looking for it or when my wife goes looking for it. Listen, but I'm, I'm telling you folks, we need to stop talking all this fear. Because li let me just say, stop listening to your fear. Listen, I love this scripture, First, First Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. Hallelujah. It says, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold of eternal life, whereunto thou were also called. And has professed a good profession before many witnesses. Listen, I, and, and let, me just start, let me just start backwards. I've made a profession. This is my profession of faith. I'm not going to get the coronavirus. I can't give you something. I cannot contaminate you with something I don't got. That's my profession of faith. I said, that's my profession of faith. Yeah, yeah, preacher man, but, but you know, there's been some that profess the same thing and they got, and, and they got the virus. Well, listen, if they got the virus and they need to believe and they need to make their profession of faith, that that virus is gonna die and it's not gonna hurt or harm them. Hallelujah. We gotta fight the good fight of faith. That's why it's called the fight. You say, why is it a fight? Because folks, let me tell you something. When everything around you is saying something different than what, than, than what the beliefs on the inside of you are saying, you're gonna have, there's going to be a fight. In a world where there's so much insecurity right now, there's, there, there's, there's so much unsurety, if I can say it that way. There's nobody that's really sure about anything. Listen, we have to hold on to our profession, and we got to profess a good profession before all the witnesses. It's not that I'm being arrogant. And, I, and, I, and you know, I, I know that this has come across at times, you know, because I've said I'm not going to get the virus. And I cannot contaminate you with something I don't have. And I know that that's come off arrogant folks. No, 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 no. That's my profession of faith. Listen, and I, 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 I've, I've confessed that over my family, over my household. I've said the virus cannot come into this household because there's angels all around. Listen, stirring up the healing, stirring up healing in my house. Hallelujah. So that no virus, no plague could come nigh my dwelling. Hallelujah. But I'm going to fight the good fight of faith. And I'm going to stand in faith. Hallelujah. Listen, I'm not going to fight the fight of fear. And for a whole lot of people, their faith is inoperable because they're trying to overcome their fear so that they can stand in faith. Amen. And listen to what I'm going to say. Fear is Satan's tool to rob you of your faith. Fear is Satan's tool to rob you of your faith. Fear is Satan's tool to rob you of your faith. And you need to understand, folks, listen to what I'm going to say. You cannot stand in faith while you're walking in fear. You cannot stand in faith. How am I going to stand and walk at the same time? And if I'm walking in fear, if I'm walking, you know, and, and, I, and listen to what I'm saying. I'm not, I'm not saying, I am not saying that you shouldn't be careful. I'm not saying don't wash your hands. Listen, you should have been washing your hands, you know, for 20 seconds. Pastor Eli told me this about two, three years ago. He said, if you don't wash your hands for at least 20 seconds, he goes, it didn't do you any good to wash your hands. He said, all you did was rinse them. He goes, you just moved the germs around a little bit and you took, them all, all, or you took them along with you. He told me that about two, three years ago. Folks, you should have been washing your hands for at least 20 seconds anyways. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, now they said, you know, that, that taking vitamin C, you know, you know it, 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 it helps the immune system. And, and you know, I, I'm like, I've been, I've, been, I've been taking vitamin C for years now just because I felt that, you know, it was a good practice. And, and the Lord said it was okay to do. So, I, you know, I, I would, you know, take about a thousand milligrams a day of vitamin C. I, I had, I, actually, my wife went and dug up my jar. She goes, you're almost out. And I said, yeah. She said, and, and you know, but I, it's, it's just something that, I, that I've done for years now. Amen. 
No, folks, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing this because I, I'm afraid. I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm not in fear. I cannot, listen, I cannot stand in faith while I'm walking in fear. Write that down somewhere. You need to know it. Why? Because every time fear comes around, you need to, you need, listen, you need to shut fear out. You need, mm, can I just say this? You need to tell fear to shut up. I'm not going to be in fear. I'm not going to walk in fear because it prohibits me. It, it, it stops me from standing in faith. Hallelujah. Listen, as I was going through this and <clears throat> the Lord was speaking to me about faith and, and believing his word, you know, because let me just say this. It's his word, the preaching of his word, but it's, it's, it's activating. Faith activates the word within us. As, as, we're, as we teach the word, as we preach the word, you got to activate it by faith. You got to take a stand and say, no, I believe that if God had to shut the mouths of lions, he would do it. And whatever giant stands before me, whether it's sickness, whether it's disease, whether it's, whether it's a plague, whether it's a, whether it's a pandemic, whether it's, whether it's financial, economic crisis in our, in our, you know, can I just say something? <clears throat> Listen, you know, everybody's worried about, about, about contaminating people. And I, and I understand that, you know. But, you know, there, there's, a, there's a point where, you know, we just go too far. You know, uh, there's, a, there's, there's people that, you know, they just kind of, they're, they're, they're staying away from the elderly. They got them, they got them incarcerated in their own trailers or homes or whatever. And folks, I'm going to be very honest with you. Listen, I heard a testimony. I heard, I heard, I heard one, one gal, you know, she, she, she went and told her, her grandma, Grandma, you know, I'm not going to come around too much anymore. And, 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 and you know, because, you know, <clears throat> I deal with a lot of people and I don't, I don't, I don't want them, I don't want to, you know, I don't want them, you know, contaminating me and then me can contaminate you and then you get sick and die. You know what the grandma said? Let me tell you how she said it. I, mija, I believe Psalms 91. She says, no plague shall come nigh my dwelling. She goes, but if you don't want to see me, don't that sound like an old folk? But if you don't want to see me, let this go ahead and be your excuse. You know, I, I I was at my sister's shop and she was telling me another testimony. <clears throat> you know, there was a, 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 a one of our seniors. I don't like calling them old. They're just you know seniors. You know, uh, and, and one of one of a senior went in there and got her hair all done. And and she goes, yeah. She goes, my son tried to tell me, mom, you need to stay home. You know, you're old. And mom, you know. And she said, you know, this effing. And she, I'm just gonna say, you know, I'm not gonna say the word, but she said that f word, f bomb, and the you know coronavirus. She said, you know, she goes, I, I don't believe in it. She said, you know, and I'm not. She said, and and, and I'm, I'm I'm sitting there thinking, and, and I'm listening to her because, and and I said what she said so that you could understand um her mouth was not saved she might have been saved and i believe she was saved but her mouth wasn't saved amen and she's talking crazy like this and she says you know she goes what's more she goes if i get the corona and coronavirus and die she goes so i go to heaven she goes i'm 84 years old i believe that was her age or 84 she goes i'm 84 years old i've lived my life she goes, I'm not going to be incarcerated. She goes, I'm not going to be in jail at my house because of this thing. You know, and so many of people are, are walking in fear in their own homes. You understand, what am I saying? Stand in faith. Stand in faith. Listen, Romans 4.17 <clears throat> I want to take you through, you know, something that I see through uh, uh, Abraham's faith. And we're going we're gonna to read. It says, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many. I want you to understand, as, I, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. Listen, he didn't have the first son of promise yet. He didn't have kid number one yet. And God is saying, I made you a father of many nations. Amen. He said, I made you a father of many nations. What's he saying? He said, it's already done. It says, father of many nations before him who, who he believed. Abraham believed God. Even God who, who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Verse 18. Listen. 
I love this. It says, who against hope, believed in hope. Who against hope, believed in hope. In a world where there seems to be no hope, folks, listen, we need to bring hope. We need to bring hope by bringing the word of God and helping people to stand in faith and not walk in fear. I said, who against hope. There was no hope for him to stand on. There was nothing for him to stand on. But he believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations. According to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. In other words, listen, there was no hope of him ever becoming a father of many nations but he believed in hope hallelujah he believed in hope hallelujah verse 19 and being not weak in faith he considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old neither the deadness of Sarah's womb Let, let, let me go back a little bit. And let me speak to you about hope. Go back to verse 18 for just a little bit. You know, I believe I, I, this is a word for somebody out there. Listen, you've, you, you've, been, you've seemed to have lost hope. And all hope has, has seemed to be lost and you don't know what to do anymore. You, you know, I, I'm speaking this word right to you. My hope is in God. Your hope placed in God will get you through this situation. I don't know what you're going through exactly, but the finances have gone way down. You're struggling with, with finding food to eat. You haven't been working very much, but listen, God is saying, I got you covered. The answer is right around the corner. The answer is on its way. Hang on to hope. Hang on to the little hope. Keep hope alive. Keep hope alive. Keep hope alive. Keep hope alive. Keep hope alive and live. Keep hope alive and live. There is no hopeless situation as long as he's still on the throne. Verse 19. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead. Listen, I want you to understand. And when I read this again, it, it just kind of all jumped back at me. Listen, folks, this is nothing new. This is nothing. We, we, we've been preaching and teaching on this for years. What's the problem? Listen, we're trying to get people to come back to their beliefs. We're trying to get people to stand in their beliefs and shut their, shut their fears up, shut their fears out. Why? Because you listen, you cannot, you cannot stand in faith and believe God. You cannot stand in faith while you're walking in fear. And be not weak in faith. He considered not his own body. Listen, as long as you listen, as long as you are considering the circumstances around you, you are always going to be weak in faith. As long as you're considering everything that's going on, the pandemic, as long as you're considering all this stuff, you're always going to be weak in faith. No, folks. It says, in being not weak in faith, he considered not. There's some things that you're going to, listen, there's some things that you're going to have to stop giving so much consideration to. Well, you know, you got to consider, I'm, 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 I'm about to be off of work now for three weeks, or I'm about to be off of work now for two weeks, or, or you know, you got to consider that, that all the bills are going to roll around at the beginning of the month again. The mortgage payment, the car payment, the insurance payment, the utility bill, the electric bill, and all these things are about to roll around. You got, you, you know, you got to consider that I got everything coming up again, and I haven't worked for two weeks and I'm not getting no 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 consider not I said consider not you said well if I'm not supposed to consider what am I supposed to consider, consider the God that you got that listen that when there was a drought when when Elijah prayed and there was a drought and he was re, he was running for his life he, he God sent a raven to come and feed him hallelujah you know God will always take things from the most unnatural means is it, but that's just like God you say why does he do that so that everybody would know beyond a shadow of a doubt that listen he is still moving 
he made that raven come and feed Elijah. And when that little brook dried out, I said, when that little brook dried out where he was drinking water, he sent him to a, a widow's house who had just a little cornmeal and, and a little bit of oil, just enough, listen, just enough to make a bread for her and, and her son so that they would eat it and die. And God said, that's where you're going to get your, your fill. Amen. That's where you're going to get your fill. You're going to get your fill right there in that, with that little old lady. And God always makes, you know, and, and I love it because faith in God, faith in God will suspend the natural to put you into the supernatural. Amen. You know, I, 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 asked, I asked the Lord one day, I said, I said, Lord, I said, I said, Jesus didn't have to walk on water. I said, you could have just transported him there. I said, you did with Philip. Remember, Philip was there, and then Philip was, was, was by the eunuch, and then Philip was gone. He transported him. I said, you could have transported Jesus. He said, yeah, but then Peter wouldn't have been able to see that, he, that, that if he had faith in me, he could walk on water. Amen? Amen. And God will always do things in a way for us, listen, for us to get a little closer to Him. And being not weak in faith, He considered not His own body when He was about a hundred years old, neither the deadness of Sarah's womb. Amen. Hallelujah. He was strong in faith. Listen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> he staggered not. Hallelujah. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. You know, uh, as I was reading, as I was meditating on this, <clears throat> the whole story came back of when God asked Isaac to sacrifice, I mean, when God asked uh, Abraham to sacrifice Isaac. Now we look at that and we really don't really we really don't get the full the fullness of or we don't get the full revelation of what was actually taking place but i'm glad they're here but so i'm i'm going to ask pastor steve and, and daniel to come up and assist me today <clears throat> i'm going to play god listen because it's pretty awesome Stand right here. Just stand right here, both of you. Listen, I want you to go to Genesis chapter 22, verses 1 through 8. <clears throat> and we're going to read, uh, read it through real quick. It says, And it came to pass after these things that the God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Listen, and when it says right there where it says that God did tempt him, he tested him. God did test Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, there, behold here, here I am. <clears throat> verse, tw verse 2. He said, and he said, take now thy son, thy only, be, thy only son, Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering. Everybody say burnt. A burnt offering. Folks, he wasn't just, he wasn't just saying, you know, sacrifice. He said, after you sacrifice him, burn him. A burnt offering upon the mountain, which I will tell of thee. Tell thee of, rather. Verse 3. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and, and, and saddled his ass and, and took, his, took two of his young men with him and, and Isaac his son and clave the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him. Then, one, then on the third day, everybody say the third day. Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. Verse 5. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide here with the ass, and, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again, again to you. I'll, I'll back up, well, well, we'll break it down a little bit. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son, and took the fire in his hand and the knife, and they went both of them together. <clears throat> and Isaac spake unto Abraham, 
his father and said, My father, he said, Here, I, here am I, my son. And he said, Behold, the fire and the wood. But where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for the burnt offering. So they went both, both of them together. I want to go back to verse 1. And I want to break this scenario down a little bit more so we get a little bit better understanding. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham. And he said unto him, Abraham. And he said, Behold, here I am. Verse 2. And he said, Take thine only son, Isaac, whom you love. I know you love this boy like nothing like more than life itself this is your boy man you would gladly you, you need a kidney let me pull it out you need my heart let me give it to you you need a piece of liver let me give it whatever it would take this is your boy and you love him and god says i know you love him he says but now take him take him to the land of moriah and offer him there a burnt sacrifice unto me verse 3 and Abraham rose up at you. I don't know about you folks. I, I might have been like, I'm not. Uh, <sighs> Lord, I overslept today. Can we do it tomorrow? Lord, I don't feel good tomorrow. Can I do it the next day? I don't know about y'all, but listen, I would have not gotten up early in the morning to go burn my son. I would have not gotten up early in the morning to go and make this sacrifice that God has asked. God, I love you. Lord, I love you. You know I love you, Lord. You, Lord, you know I love you. But Lord, this is my son. This is my only son. This is my only begotten son. And you're asking me to sacrifice him. Lord, but how? How can you do this to me? No, it says, And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and clave the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him Whew. that's faith that's faith that's faith verse 4 then on the third day you know I think this third day is significance of how many days how many days was, was the Lord, on, on how many days did he rise again? On the third day. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the, oh, there, there's the place. There's the place, son. Verse 5. You know, I don't know about you, but if I would have seen that place, <laughs> it's over there. Let's go this way, son. I think it's. Come on, son, we, we need to go this way. I don't know, are you going to take him that way? You're going to take him that way so that they could live? Oh, I don't think so. You're going to, listen, listen. Are you going to take him to the place that God said so that they don't catch the corona virus? I'm sorry, you know. <laughs> I'm sorry, but y'all are going to have to deal with it on your own. You know what I'm saying? Because this is my son, and I'm going to take care of my son. Y'all take care of your kids the way you take care of your kids. I'll take care of my... No, God said, take your only begotten son. And Abraham said unto the young men, abide here with the ass, and I will, and I and the lad will go yonder and work. I don't know about you. God called it a sacrifice. I said, God called it a sacrifice. Abraham called it worship. Are you hear what I'm saying? God called it a sacrifice. Abraham called it worship. That means that sometimes, sometimes our worship is going to be sacrificial. Our worship is going to be not doing what we want, 
but doing what he has said for us to do. Our worship is simply going to be God. I'm going to stand here when everything around me is going chaotic, when everything around me is falling apart. Lord, I'm going to stand here and I'm going to worship you with all my heart, with all my strength, with all my mind, and I'm going to love you, Lord. Abraham called it worship. Verse 6. Now, you know, we always talk about Abraham's faith. We always talk about Abraham's faith. But listen. And Abraham took the wood and the burnt offering and said, and set it upon Isaac, his son. And he took the fire in his hand and the knife, and they went both of them together. You know, about this time, I would start asking questions. You know, if I was Isaac, and I was your son, and you loaded me up with the wood, and you took the knife and the fire, and all I got is the wood that I'm carrying, I'd be saying, you know, there's something not right here. Something not right here. But you know what? Isaac trusted the same God that his daddy did. We need to teach our children to trust the same God that has brought us through. We need to teach them the same way we were taught to trust in the Lord with all our hearts. And lean not to our own understanding. We have to teach our children to do the same. And they went, both of them, together. Verse 7. Finally, in verse 7, Isaac speaks up. And Isaac spake unto Abraham and his father and said my father and Abraham said here am I my son and he said behold the fire the wood is on my back but where's the lamb where's the lamb for the burnt offering all of a sudden Isaac's getting a revelation I got the wood on my back you got the knife in your hand. You got the fire with you. But where's the lamb? Verse 8. And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself an offering. So they get to the place he unloads the wood off of his back and then he takes his son and he lays him upon the altar. He lays him. Scoot down a little bit. He lays him upon the altar. What was it that Abraham knew what was it that Abraham knew that he was willing to not stagger, not doubt now in putting his son to sacri as a sacrificial lamb and making his son the sacrificial lamb? What did Abraham know? He knew God is faithful. God is faithful. He said, he took me out of the land of my fathers to a land that I knew nothing of, that he said was flowing with milk and honey, and he made me to prosper there. He said, I will bless you with blessing. He goes, and multiplying you, I will multiply. And he made him very rich. And God said, and, and Abraham said, and he kept his word. When I doubted him and I gave Sarah up to be, to be with other men, she, he said, God was faithful to his promise, even though I missed God. God was still faithful and God still spared my wife. Even having missed God, God was still faithful. You say, why? Because 
He told Sarah, tell him you're my brother. Twice he told him, tell him you're my brother so that they won't kill me to have you as a wife. He wasn't trying to preserve Sarah. He was trying to preserve himself. Yet God was faithful. And he, and, and, and he account, see, that's why it says, and he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but he was, he was strengthened in faith. He was strong in faith, giving glory to God. How was he giving glory to God? He was recounting. I'm sure that when he was, when he had Abraham, when he had Isaac on the altar ready to sacrifice him, he was, he was simply saying this. Listen, let me, let me tell you what he was saying. Go to Hebrews, go to Hebrews chapter, Hebrews chapter 11, verses 17 to 19. And I'm going to tell you exactly what he was saying right now. It is recorded in God's word. This is by faith. When Abraham was tried, offered up Isaac. He's offering up Isaac now. And he that received the promise offered up his only begotten son. He, he what? He that, you've already received the promise. You say, what's the promise? What's the promise I've received? The promise that, I've, that he's received is that in Isaac. In Isaac. Let's read it. Verse 18. Well, let, let, bring, go back. Go back, go back, go back to verse 17. I, I, I'm not quite done there. Thank you, Lord. It says, by faith, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promise, Abraham's the one that received the, pro the promise, offered up his only begotten son. He'd already received the promise. Now he looked back and he said, wait a minute. He brought me out of, the, he brought me out of my, my family's country and he prospered me. He made me very rich. He said, when they came again, he said, when they came, he said, my house has grown. He said, I'm 300 strong. You said, why do you say 300 strong? Because when, 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 when the four nations took Lot into captivity with 300 men from his household, Abraham went and conquered all four nations, folks. He got why? Because God was faithful to the promise. And those that bless you, I will bless. And those that curse you, I will curse. Abraham was standing on faith in faith. Verse 18. Of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Isaac hadn't had his first kid yet. You understand? And he says, in, my, in, in Isaac, what does it say? It says, in Isaac shall thy seed be called. It was in Isaac's son, Jacob, that Israel was born. The nation of Israel. The nation of Israel was born in Isaac's seed. So when Abraham was getting ready, he said, verse 19, Accounting that God, accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, whence also he received him in a figure. He said, I've already seen the vision. I've already seen the vision of Jesus. He said, and he came through my son Isaac. He said, and I stand. If I have to sacrifice him to God, God will raise him up even from the dead. But he was strong in faith. He had enough faith to believe that because he had taken account of all the times before. Two, three. If any of you have been healed of cancer, don't suffer this. I said, Abraham, Abraham.